Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Professor Jaseem Ahmed from IAC Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia. Today I am going to discuss on the topic and introduction to learner as a psychosocial entity. The objectives of today's discussion are number one, to explain the meaning of learner as a psychosocial entity. Number two, to describe the meaning and importance of accepting learner as a unique entity. Number three, state the importance of exploring the learners. Number four, describe the process of exploring the learners. And the last objective of this discussion is to apply these understandings to explore your learners and plan accordingly for their education and development. So, dear students, the psychosocial approach looks at learners in the context of the combined influence that psychological factors and the surrounding social environment have on their physical and mental wellness and their ability to function. That means influencing the entire domains of their personality. Entity means a thing with distinct and independent existence. It is individuality of a person or learner in our discussion. Each learner is unique in one or many ways. We as teachers need to accept that each learner is unique, try to explore and understand them and prepare a course of action accordingly so that most of the learners are benefited, grow and develop. The importance of exploring students infers that the teacher should know the students and their learning capacities and circumstances. It is very essential to know and make the learning condition better through different exercises and this is the responsibility of the teacher that they have to develop the enabling conditions for the learners to watch and relate what they have experienced during their regular day-to-day -day encounters. So keeping in mind the end goal to get the best outcomes from available learning circumstances and to enable students to use their maximum capacity and abilities, it is vital to explore their students so that we can create a favorable condition for better growth, development and learning of the children. Now friends, we are trying to look at the various aspects on which different students differ from one another and from where we can find out, we can search out, we can try to understand the uniqueness of each and every learner who are available in our class or in our school system. So first of all, look at the pattern of growth and development you must have experienced, especially at primary school level or upper primary level or preschooling stage, each and every child has their own pattern of growth and development. There are certain children, there are some children who grow faster than the other. There are certain children who speak at lower stage than the others. Hence, you will find that on many aspects of growth and development, they differ from one another. And all these aspects of you know, growth and development has something to do with their education, with their learning, with their, you know, progress in education. Now come to the second important aspect, which is social aspects. You must be aware that there are certain children, there are some children who speak very fast. There are certain children who are extrovert in nature. There are some children who are totally introvert and they don't want to mix with others. So if their students are not mixing with one another, how they can learn from each other. So mixing with one another is another very important aspect of the personality. Those children who are extrovert, those children who don't feel any kind of fear in interacting with teachers, with person in the society, with any other who are available in the school, the guests who are coming into the school or into their homes, into their residence, they are the children who grow and develop more 
than those who don't want to interact with other so social interaction social interaction social transaction you can say or or mixing with one another mixing with each other in the classroom one another in the classroom mixing with the teacher interaction interaction with the seniors interaction with the juniors interaction with other members of the family and society is one of the most important factor influencing growth development and learning of the children then come to the another aspect which is also very important and that is emotional aspect there are certain students they are there are certain people in our classroom in our school setup who are highly emotional on the contrary there are some students who are totally totally not influenced by whatever is happening in their surroundings in their environment so emotional development is another very important aspect and you can find that children differ from one another on the aspect of their emotional maturity or emotional adjustment then the next important aspect is mental or intellectual or level of intelligence of the learners friends you must be knowing that intelligence or mental level or intellectual ability is the one of the most important of growth and development especially the intellectual development scholastic development of the children those children who are intelligent and of course intelligence has to deal to do with the uh, hereditary factor as well as the environmental factor then come to the attitude in general an attitude towards a particular subject topic or environment all these aspects are the aspects on which students differ from one another the next aspect is aptitude of the learner you know aptitude is inclination of a learner towards certain specific things towards some activity towards some course towards studying some subject towards certain plays and games and towards activities and etc etc in terms of career it is your inclination it is your likeness towards certain profession certain training courses where you want to build your career so you will find that different students differ from one another in terms of their aptitude towards something then come to the learning styles each and every learner has their own learning styles some of the students use and are interested to study through just reading the books some other are the students who are interested to, dis to discuss with the teacher discuss with the senior discuss with the classmates on certain topics certain issues there are certain other students who love to do project on different themes of education there are certain other students you will find that they they are very interested to perform some activities in front of other children in the school campus in the premise itself and there are various different styles of learning which are adopted by different children so you will find that on this aspect of personality different children have variation uh, uh, and so teachers need to plan teaching learning process accordingly then you will find that students have their different likes and dislikes some like this thing some like some other thing so all other aspects which come to the picture or the school teaching learning environment uh, are very important for the teacher in terms of planning the teaching learning process for their students you will find that each and every child is unique on all these aspects of personality be it cognitive be it affective be it psychomotor be it related to hereditary factors be it related to environmental factors be it related to social factors emotional factors or any other factors which are relevant in the society today so you will have to find out and you will have to uh, uh, find out even uh, even you can see in the case of you know in the case of uh, uh, identical twins who are born together from the same parent and they are identical in nature means I, both of them are either either uh, brothers or either sisters but in course of time at the time of birth they are totally identical to each other but as they grow up as they interact with the society as they interact with the environment as they interact with the other members of the family and uh, they tend to change from uh, previous stage to the coming stage and in course of time their personality are different from each other and in this way even the identical twins become different from each other now the question arises how to explore our students how to explore our learners how to find out the strength and weakness of our learners how to find out how to know what are the hidden potentialities 
of our learners which can be exploited by the teacher for the betterment of all those learners. So this is very important challenge for the teacher how to explore them. There are various ways to explore them. All the teachers uh, used to uh, use to apply these activities and this process. Some important process I am discussing here. First of all, that you have to involve each and every learner of the classroom in teaching learning process. You can't avoid those the students who are not interacting with you in the classroom. So it is very important and it is central to exploring the learners that each and every student in the classroom are well engaged, are well involved in the process of teaching and learning. You can see in the picture that some of the students are, you know, interacting with the teacher and, uh, and, and that the teacher is trying to involve that learner in the teaching learning process. And in the process, teacher is trying to, to find out the strength of the learner, to explore the capability of the learner. Then during this process of classroom interaction, and you can develop dialogue and discussion with the learner. The more dialogue you organize, the more discussion you organize, the more you will be in a position to find out the strength and weakness of the learner. The more you engage the learners in the activities, activities within the classroom or activities out of the classroom, activities within the school premises or activities out of the school premises in terms of educational tours or excursion or projects or certain kind of data collection, etc., etc. Through all these activities, you will not only be teaching them, but at the same time, you will be in a position to identify their strengths, identify their weakness, and exploring them, their potentialities. And through these exploration, you can build their career, you can put them on the right path, and you can build their career in a better way. There are other ways also uh, to know about the learners, for example, plays, games, sports. You must have seen that many of the students are interested in sports. They used to play sports, participate in sports activities, but there are other students who simply enjoy watching others playing in the ground. And there are third category of students, those who don't want to play or don't want to even watch those learners. So they are totally, you know, out of the picture of the sports and games activities. So three different categories of, you know, learners in terms of their interest towards play, games, sports, you can, uh, um, uh, you can uh, see very easily in any school campus or any college campus. There are another very important, you know, way, cultural programs. You can organize cultural programs in your school, in your classroom as well. You must be aware that in your own class, in our class, we have observation that our class uh, is a multi, you know, cultural classroom nowadays. And multiculturalism is one of the most important attributes of today's classroom. And multicultural atmosphere is needed to be, you know, uh, is needed to be celebrated in the present scenario of India and in the world. And if you have so a multicultural classroom, for example, if you have children from northeastern state of India, if you have children from North India, if you have children from South India, if you have children from West India in your class, it means your class is multicultural and you can organize cultural programs, cultural activities. And in those activities, you can provide leadership to the children who are coming especially from different cultural backgrounds. In this way, you will be in a position to, to develop the leadership among those children and, and you will be given the opportunity to other students of the class to know about one another's cultural background, one another's culture and respect the culture of one another and in this way you can develop national, you know, national integration uh, in your classroom, in your school environment. Then we have another very important, you know, process of, uh, of, uh, of exploring the learners and teaching them and giving them, them the opportunity to learn a lot by celebrating days of importance. You can, uh, you can celebrate different days on different occasions like uh, uh, 5th June, you can use for World Environment Day. 24th October, you can celebrate, you know, UN Day of, of celebrations and when UN was, UN, UN, UN was established. So in this way, you can uh, celebrate different days as per different subjects. And in this way, you can develop their interest. And in the process, you can also explore their personalities. Then open and free environment to put their ideas. Means teachers are supposed to give free environment to all the learners of the class and all the students of the school so that in that open environment, they can come forward and express themselves openly. And in that situation, in that, uh, you know, circumstances, you will be in a position to understand them well. 
and guide them well. They will also be in a position to come forward and share with you uh, the things which they cannot share with some other else. So the nearness and the, you know, uh, the, the relationship between the teacher and the taught will also be strengthened and you will be having the opportunity to understand your learner, to explore your learners, to guide them for their better education in a very good environment. So you need to encourage them for innovation through this process. As soon as children are coming towards you, as soon as you are finding that the students are coming towards you, they are they are having some uh, a strong bond with you, they can then you can up exploit these opportunities and you can provide them, you can encourage them, you can motivate motivate them for certain innovation in their study, innovation in their, you know, uh, skills, some in innovation in whatever, whatever activities they have been performing, in, even innovation can be done with the with the reading styles, with the writing styles, with their with their doing homework styles. So you can start from here and in the process you will be in a position to explore their ability in, in the way of innovation. Then uh, you can also display uh, their talent and interest in whatever ways they like. So you should give the learner the opportunity to express their interest, their attitude, their aspirations and their talent in whatsoever way uh, they want to express their, you know, potentialities. So give them the full opportunity and freedom to, ex to, to, to exploit, uh, sorry, to, uh, to express their, you know, interest and thinking, imagination, creativity and all those potentialities which they have. At the same time, for all these activities, for all these, you know, potentialities to come out, you need to motivate learners to bring previous learning and experiences into the classroom. Another very important uh, point is that teachers should also cultivate the habit of listening to the learners with patience. Because unless you as a teacher listen to the learners with patience, the students will not come to you to share, the, share their ideas, share their problems, share their difficulties. So teachers need to cultivate this habit of listening to the learners in their own personality so that they can provide opportunity to the learners to come forward and discuss the matter they want to share with the teachers with full confidence. Then motivate learners for peer group activities, getting them engaged in healthy discussion and arguments, facilitate them to arbitrate and reconcile their learning. By exploring students, teacher could comprehend that every student is one of a kind and just through exploring students, we could know about a student's thoughts process, logical ideas, adapting necessities and after that discover distinctive routes through which they could learn. Exploring learners helps one understand how they are constructing their knowledge and one could estimate their extent of learning which helps not only to plan teaching learning experiences and processes, but also helps in creating useful learning situations. By applying whatever we have discussed uh, in, in, in our discussion till this moment of time, by applying all those a 4 c processes, teachers may experience and find out that each learner is a unique entity. One should realize that not every student is same as the other. As an educator, one needs to comprehend and acknowledge the individual contrast among the students. The instructor, that is the teacher, need to discover varied approaches to instruct precisely the same content to different types of students in the class. Since students come in the class with an extensive variety of backgrounds and instructive encounters, there are diverse components that add to the distinction in their encounters. For example, some may have read a variety of books on the same subject because of resources availability. On the other hand, some may not have books at all. Some may have prior knowledge on the topic. Some may have visited different places of significance in the class itself. And those visit which the students have, uh, have, have done, those experiences that they have earned through their visits can be shared in the classroom. And in this way, the class may be benefited from the visit of one learner for the entire class. The class may have diverse religious, cultural and, re and regional foundations. Some of them may come from the family of agricultural background. Some of them may come from the family of business background. Some of the children may come from the family of political background. Some of the children may come from the family of a social service provider background and so on and so forth.
the uniqueness of all needs to be identified and explored by the teacher because all these backgrounds of students can work as can contribute as an asset for the entire class the distinct knowledge also influences the cognitive structure and the structural knowledge of the learner the differences in the structural knowledge of the learners poses a challenge to the teacher but at the same time it allows the teacher to develop the content from multiple perspectives making it multidimensional and more learning oriented for in the entire class take an example india is a country of farmers and suppose the teacher is teaching the topic and the topic is agricultural practices in this class teacher needs to identify such learners with distinct experiences in agricultural practices means those learners who come from the family of the agricultural practitioners that is the from the family of the farmer and develop the lesson in such a manner that the learner who has this background may contribute in overall teaching learning process in the classroom to tackle this situation the teacher can allow the learner to share his experiences which can act as a foundation to start the lesson this sharing of knowledge helps in stating and ownership on the knowledge as well as it brings the primary source of knowledge into the classroom itself thereby enriching the learning environment similarly the teacher can do with other students having background in other areas every learner has a distinct learning style as i have already pointed out earlier based on the preferred mode of receiving information felder and silverman proposed four models of learning styles these are number 1 the type of information received when some of the students receive information try to receive information or like to receive information in sensory mode and some are more interested to work in duty that is thinking imagination reason based logical based the other is the mode of receiving the information either in the terms of visual or verbal third one is the process of receiving those information either actively or reflectively the fourth one is the order in which the information is received sequentially or globally now look at all these four different modes of you know uh, 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 getting information in detail these models are highly useful in considering the diversity among learners and how different instructional strategies in classroom can be used to provide an effective teaching learning experiences sensory students prefer receiving facts and scientific terminologies they focus more on memorization whereas the intuitive learners prefer to receive concepts see relationship among ideas explore complexities and exceptions and welcome innovative and varied approaches to problems for example learners who prefer sensory style would be having better performance on test based on facts like laws principles and chemical equations the intuitive learners can be taught using problem solving strategies or inquiry based methods visual learners prefer learning from demonstrations pictures diagrams and graphs whereas verbal learners are more proficient with exploration of knowledge through language based processes such as talking writing explaining and discussing for example in a classroom there is a huge content for visual learners through the use of technology visual resources are readily available in the form of animations and videos especially to teach any cyclic process like water cycle photosynthesis nitrogen cycle and many other processes in social sciences and in all other subjects active learners are those who prefer to learn while doing and being actively engaged in investigations group work discussion and other opportunities for the student student and a student instructor interaction that is a student teacher interaction then reflective learners prefer more individual work and finding chances for reflection now the teachers required to provide these facilities to the learners whosoever learner is available in the class and whatever mode of receiving information they like they can easily grasp those information so teacher need to be multi dimensional multi tasker and 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 providing uh, opportunities in multi dimensional way so that each and every learner can grasp those information in their own styles in their own preferred styles and in their own preferred ways
Now come to the sequential learners. Sequential learners prefer information in smaller pieces which can be presented in sequential manner to give a better understanding. These learners excel in traditional course which are based on sequential building of concepts. Whereas global learners operate in an opposite manner, preferring to establish an overview of the larger concepts followed by the ideas with smaller details. However, there is a possibility that global learners could fail to grasp the larger picture which is essential for the sake of knowledge building due to being engaged in the minute facts and detailing. Remember, motivating learners to bring their previous experiences into the classroom is one of the most important attribute for teaching as well as learning. So, teachers need to motivate learners to bring their experiences, their previous knowledge, their day-to-day -day interaction with the community, with the society into the classroom. Then, the secret of learning, we must remember that the secret of learning is the first step towards success in teaching. And that is making students ready, motivated, enthusiastic, curious to learn. And you need to encourage learners to raise and ask questions. You can see in the picture that students and these are the people teachers who are pursuing DLED and BED from, you know, a certain institute of uh, teacher training. They are trying to test a hypothesis on their own uh, with their cooperative efforts. And in this process, you know, they are highly motivated, they are encouraged, and teacher support is always there with them. Creating the habit of listening to the learner is another very important uh, aspect of all the entire process that already we have uh, took up in, 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 in earlier slides. Involving learners through dialogue, discussion, and argumentation is another very important you know, factor in the entire teaching learning process and the entire process of exploring the learners and the entire process of knowing the uniqueness of each and every learner of your class. Negotiating and mediating the learning helps developing interest, self-esteem, self-concept, self-confidence, critical thinking, and listening skills of the learners. They feel a sense of responsibility, sense of achievement, and satisfaction in them. Now, dear friends, here I am giving you a note for you. So you should take a note. As a teacher, ask yourself, do you know each of your students in the classroom? If yes, list out their strengths, weaknesses, and uniqueness among all your students. If you are able to do this, you can be a great teacher. If you have not done till date, or not able to do this, or not thought about this, then you may not be a professional in teaching and require to nurture it in your own perspective. So friends, we have, you know, learned a lot. Some of the important points of our, this discussion is, knowing the learner is the foremost task of the teacher. Number two, each learner is different on some or the other aspects. This must be kept in our mind as a teacher because each learner is totally different in terms of their personality, such as learning styles, such as their interests, their attitude, their likes, their dislikes, their cognitive, affective, and psychometric abilities, and so on. This is why we call each learner as a unique entity, and we need to take care of each of them during the teaching learning process and plan our transactional strategies accordingly. With this, I thank you all and wish you to interact with you in the next presentation. Thank you so much.